Hey, welcome back to our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. My name is Larry. Well, this video is going to be about doing some repairs to a pair of turn of the century 1910-1920 oak dining tables. The table is going to be its own separate video and you may catch that in the background. We're not going to focus too much attention on that. That's going to, that's going to be a really interesting project I think you're going to enjoy. But the back story on this is uh, some very, very nice folks who drove a very, very long way and asked me if I could help them with some repairs to a table that they had bought and they absolutely love. It's a quarter sawn oak table from the turn of the century. I think he said it had eight leaves and 12 matching chairs. This is one of the chairs. It has the most damage to it. There's another chair that needs some attention, but pretty much this video is going to focus on how we handle this one. And I'll bring you in next and I'll show you exactly what we're up against. The customer's main complaint or main concern with this chair was this split here. I hope you can see it. It's where the back splat attaches to this piece of, I guess it's a molding or some structural piece that attaches to the seat. And it's split clean through. And it's been split for a while because it's just packed full of dirt. Now the question becomes when you look at this, you got to ask yourself, we know there's a tenon that drops down this back splat and attaches it and the question then becomes how far does this tenon drop and did the tenon split as well? Now for the tenon to break, it would be breaking a cross grain and that would be extremely unusual. But we need to check that because if in fact the tenon of this back splat is broken, that is going to be very dangerous if anybody ever sits on this chair and pushes back. So the first thing we've got to do is make sure that this damage doesn't include a split or any compromise to the tenon of this solid oak back splat. Okay, the chair is now upside down. This is the back of the, of the back of the chair and here's our brake. And you may not be able to see this because I'm not sure I can get the camera in far enough, but if if you look right here, you can see the bottom of the tenon of the back splat is underneath where the break occurred. So this has not been compromised. So the repair to this is just going to involve rejoining these two pieces of wood. That's a very good thing. And we have a secondary bit of damage here, and that's where this stretcher has been driven down so hard it split at this dowel and blew this piece of wood clean out. So we've got to get this apart and we've got to get this uh, back together somehow. I'm not exactly sure if we've got all the wood that we're going to need to, uh, to get this back in. But that's something we're going to have to deal with as well. And I have found from experience that any time you're working on what appears to be a single point of damage, or a single loose joint on an old chair that usually there's more to be found. I believe in an older video I showed you how I test chairs and I put my knee on the seat and then rock and you can see this entire back assembly is loose and it's not just the fractured part it's loose at the legs. So the next step for this chair is a disassembly and re-gluing. Okay, I've got the chair all marked and it's a kind of a chilly night here in Georgia. You just heard the heat kick on. And what we have are these, uh, there's two oak plugs that plug these screws. And I wanted to show you how I got this out. If you just take a chisel sometimes and just give it some sharp wraps, you don't want to cut it or split it, but you're just kind of shocking the glue. And that'll often, you can see, I hope you can see, that there's just a drop of animal glue right there, of hide glue. That'll often shock it enough that it'll, it'll pop right out. We like to save all these old things. With both screws out of the rear leg assembly, let's see if uh, this thing wants to come apart. Sharp hits with a hammer, a rubber mallet will often shock the glue joints apart and that's what's what's happening now. Ok, 
Okay, there's our back assembly. Let's see about knocking the rest of this apart. Coming apart nicely. We're going to take the aprons off. And this is the uh, the leg with the broken stretcher goes into the dowel, and you can see this has been completely redrilled and relocated. So this is a failed repair from uh, some period of time ago. So we're going to really have to look at this when uh, it comes time to finish up this chair. This is the end of the shattered stretcher, and you can see even with it put back as close as we can and clamp down. We're missing a significant bit of wood here. And if I bring you around and look right square down that hole, you can see that's been blown apart and re-glued in the past. And this bottom left hand corner is not together the way it should be. The upper left hand corner is compromised. We know the upper right hand corner is a mess. There's, I could glue this back together with epoxy and it would be strong, but I don't think that's the right fix for this chair or for these people. So I think what we're going to do is scarf on, mill, mill out a new piece of oak and scarf it on probably somewhere between the end of the clamp and that piece of tape. And then we will re-drill for the dowel. The dowel that is in the leg is an old repair. You can see at one time there was a mortise that was milled in there. That mortise would have accepted a tenon like this on the stretcher. That obviously snapped out and it's been filled and it's been plugged with a dowel. So we're going to leave this rather than uh, attempt to clean out whatever has been put in there. We'll repair this with a new piece of wood to accept that dowel and then everything will go back together and it will uh, it'll be a, a strong repair. So the next step is to mill up the uh, piece of oak that I have and get ready to uh, scarf it on. Okay here we are so far I measured this distance it was 13 16 measured this distance it's 13 16 as well so using the table saw I cut a piece of oak 13 16 inches square and now the only other thing that I had to be cognizant of is this back angle. And to measure that, I just used my little gauge here, set it to that angle, drew it on here, set the blade on the table saw, and made my cut. So, so we now have a piece that's milled out to size. All we need to do now is scarf it onto the, uh, onto the stretcher. Okay, this is the piece that was broken. And I cut this off at a 45 degree angle. I then milled this piece of oak and I cut that at a 45 degree angle so it fits exactly there in a scarf joint that will extend the joint. And then we back cut this at a 5 degree angle which matches what was on the existing piece to match the piece that it fits into. So here we are at this point now. Now I could glue this just the way it is but I think what I'm going to do is put a dowel inside here and inside here to strengthen that up just a little bit. Okay, I hope you can see I've crossed to find the center. I'm going to drill in with a 3 a drill straight down. A little starter hole for the point of the brad point bit.
Okay, the dowel's in, the seam looks good, get some epoxy, let's epoxy this close and let it set overnight. I've used uh, oak uh, splints wrapped in uh, wax paper and got them clamped along the existing portions of the uh, stretcher to keep everything straight. It's always hard when you cover up your joints to see how well you're lined up. But we've got, you know, little portions of exposed joint right here that are smooth back on the other side as well. So I'm pretty comfortable that we've got that where we want it and we're not going to have to do too much sanding or playing around with it. Let's leave it overnight and tomorrow we'll take a look see how we did. Good morning. Let's take off these clamps and see how we did. That looks really good. Okay, I've marked the center of this piece by running a uh, straight edge corner to corner. A little starter hole and I'm using a brad point bit. It's just a little bit bigger than 3 eighths. Give me a little bit of wiggle room. Got my depth marked as well. Feels like it's bottoming out. I want to go just a little bit deeper. Okay, we're in. The next step in this uh, project, which is basically just this one chair, we have to fix this really bad split down here. And in my opinion, the only way to do that correctly is to get this back assembly apart. So what I've done is I've, a, I've put a couple of uh, spreader clamps in here. I'm going to put reasonable pressure on these joints. I'm going to warm them up with a heat gun just like we did before. Work some pressure. Maybe tap them a couple of times and see if we can break loose these two joints here and remove the whole assembly so we can clean and properly re-glue this split. So let me get the heat gun out and we'll get started. Okay, we've heated this joint for about, uh, I don't know, two or three minutes. I've got a two by four here now, a nice sharp whack, and you can see this joint's coming apart. Okay. And we've got it all apart. And here's the uh, back splat assembly. Let's take another look at this. There, now you can see more clearly that the the mortise, I'm sorry, the tenon for the back splat was not compromised and this split away. So we'll be able to uh, just put this back in. As you can see, there's lots of glue that needs to be cleaned out. A lot of dirt and grime from years past. I've got the back splat and this broken piece of mortise clamped into the large vise here and as I'm scraping this off and it's no surprise I'm sure to anyone we just take this piece right off so now I can get in here and re-glue this so every bit of this chair has now been completely disassembled and we're going to put it all back together so it'll be nice and strong for another hundred years so what I'll do here is I'll just take this razor blade and gently scrape off any remaining glue or dirt that's anywhere on any of these joints and we'll prepare to uh, rejoin this. Okay, you're looking at the back side of the, uh, the back assembly. This is where the split is, right along this line here. I've got it clamped in on one side, lined up where it needs to be. And you can see as we traverse over to the other side that this curved piece, the piece curves in this direction, because it's been broken for so long, it's lost some of its spring and it's started to straighten out. And when I drive it back where it needs to be with my thumb, you can see we have a pretty substantial gap here of missing wood. Now, 
to me this indicates that this piece is going to have to be put together with epoxy with some filler in it to fill this crack up so we never have this failure again. I think if I was just to put regular PVA glue in here or, or, or animal glue, hide glue, you know, things like this are going to weaken this joint and somebody's going to lean back on it. We're going to be right back where we were. This had been repaired once before with hide glue and that's going to uh, be a thing of the past. We're going to put this back together with, with epoxy, with filler in it so that we have good contact because this joint here is terrible and then I'm going to glue this on separately from all the rest of the pieces and let this dry before we reassemble the chair because I want to get a bunch of clamps in here and I don't want to have the back splat in this area here preventing me from clamping this down nice and tight where it needs to be. So let me mix up some epoxy and we'll get some clamps ready and we'll get this piece back exactly where it needs to be. Okay, I've got this flipped upside down. Here's the uh, top of the broken piece. It's going to go in here like that get clamped down and left. So here we go. Oh, what I did was mix up some a batch of my West System epoxy. This is a marine grade two-part epoxy. I mixed in some filler with it. That's also a product sold by uh, West Systems. And then I put some color. I just put some powdered I put some powdered raw umber in here to uh, to color this. So what we'll do is apply the epoxy. Now I've cleaned these pieces off, scraped them off with a razor blade so there's no residual glue or dirt on here. And we'll give it a light coat of epoxy. Now remember we've got this mortise here. We need to leave that unobstructed so we're going to have to make sure that we don't have any drips of epoxy that are going to plug our mortise for us. This piece is not lining up very well. You be very, very, very careful when you use these metal clamps, you don't bruise the wood. But that's just in there holding this flush. But it's flush here, it's flush here, it's not flush here. So there's, there's a bend and a set to this that we've got to try to get out. And uh, I think I'll put another clamp across here to straighten that out. Okay, I think I've got that uh, that curve matching all along the front, and we've got uh, good good adhesion all along the split. So I'm going to throw the last of the clamps on this, wipe off the excess epoxy, set this aside to dry, and this one will be done. Well, that was a very difficult glue up, and I'm extremely happy that I didn't try to put the whole chair together at once, or at least the uh, back assembly at once. Here's our seam. And it's lined up all the way down. And it was very difficult to do so. That, that broken piece had taken a set and a bit of a twist and it just did not want to line up. Almost every inch of that break had to be clamped, lined up and clamped uh, to get it to line up. <laughs> you can see it looks pretty Rube Goldberg-ish. For such a small repair to have so many clamps on it. That's what we had to do to get that joint nice and tight. Okay, the next step is to color this piece that we uh, we scarfed on and I'm just doing that with some raw umber pigment 
some lac French, which is a, just a, basically a shellac and a brush. And I just mix the color in the, on the brush and start to work it in so it starts to look, uh, look appropriate. And there's our first, uh, first coat of color. We've got a little bit more work to do, but you can see how that's pulled that right in. And of course, it's shiny because it's wet. But that's how we do it. It's been about eight hours since we've let this epoxy dry. Let's take off the clamps, see how we did. And here's the back part of the joint. You can see it's pulled together very nicely. We have some gaps here that we'll work some wax in, clean this up a little bit. So let me get this cleaned up and then we will get ready to glue this chair back together. And in the places where we have open seams, I just take this colored wax and this hot pen here, it's battery operated, and we're just going to fill these seams up with some wax, overfill them, and you can take a uh, old credit card if you want. in a rag and just wipe it and I think it's the heat from the friction that helps melt the wax and spread it out but that takes care of the of the open seam and here's the backside seam where the crack was I'm real real happy with that every every joint here has been cleaned out every mortise has been cleaned out every tenon has been cleaned off it's been dry fit I've developed a clamping plan that allows me to clamp the curved surface of the back and put appropriate pressure across the three key joints, one at each upright and one across here at the back splat which will also put pressure down here. I made clamping blocks for the center clamp. Basically what I did is I used this pattern maker's tool, pushed it against here which duplicates the curve and I drew that curve on a block of wood. I cut it out and that allows me to put this over here and get a nice straight pull. On these two other sides I've used some wood screws. You can use sandpaper under them to help them keep a grip. I'm trying to preserve the finish. The last thing I want to do is have to touch up the finish on this chair. So what I've done is I've put some blue tape on here to protect the finish. Got these down hand tight. There's a block of wood behind each one so we have something to push the clamps against. So I think that we are ready to glue this up. We're going to use hide glue because this is an antique. Hide glue is a hot glue as you know and I'll be racing against the clock to get these joints glued up and clamped before the hide glue starts to gel. But that's the next step so let me get the uh, glue ready to go. I'll bring you back and we will get this uh, rear leg assembly glued back together. Here we go. Wish me luck.
There's one of the joints pulled nice and tight together. Here's the joint of the back splat. That's nice and tight all the way across. And here's the joint on the other side. That's nice and tight. I threw a clamp across this because this had a little twist in it that I wasn't happy with. So I warmed it up with a heat gun then put the clamp on to take that twist out. So I think we're in good shape. We're going to leave this to, uh, to sit and get hard and uh, then we'll move forward with reassembling the rest of the chair. Okay, let's talk about uh, what's going on so far. This chair came in with what appeared to be nothing more than a cracked stretcher and a fracture to uh, the, the frame just under the seat. We could have just thrown some epoxy and epoxy putty on that uh, broken stretcher. We could have just forced some glue in the cracks here and glued it up. But that's not what this chair needed. Uh, as you recall, the chair was loose. This chair needed to be completely disassembled. That broken piece had to be repaired, not by gluing it back together, but by actually fabricating another piece of wood and attaching it, drilling it out, coloring it, and basically replacing the damaged piece. And then uh, the work up here, you saw what was necessary to get this back together correctly. We had to disassemble the whole chair, clean everything, we used about 50 clamps to get that curve lined up just so. And then every one of these joints was cleaned out. Every one of the dowels and uh, any, every one of the tenons was cleaned. And then the whole thing, uh, this whole back assembly was re-glued. We still have to re-glue the chair, but we're going to do that tomorrow. Got a lot of time in this little chair already. But when it's done, it's going to be ready for another 100 years. And that's what we try to accomplish here. We, we, we try to do things the right way. You can see just how much time can be devoted to one single chair to bring it back to where it needs to be. Uh, we've got one other repair on another chair. That's one I think we're going to just be able to handle by re-gluing a joint and uh, clamping it up. But this one, this little Dickens over here, <laughs> she gave us a run for our money. Anyways, it's been a great day. We got a lot of work done today. We're going to let this set overnight, let everything harden up. We'll come here tomorrow. We'll take the clamps off, take a look, see if we have to touch up any finish. I hope not, and then we'll move on. So stick with us. Tomorrow we'll put this chair back together and wrap this video up. Good night. If you can believe it, that's the sun. It has been raining here in Georgia, it seems like, for two weeks. There's Miss Abigail on, on patrol. It's a beautiful Sunday morning, early spring here in Georgia, mid to late February. And you know where we're going? In the shop to glue up a chair. Stay eternally vigilant, young lady. Yeah, and Stuart wasn't too pleased. He was left out of that last shot, so there's Stuart. I came out to the shop late last night and unclamped this piece. Wanted to make sure we didn't have any touch-ups that needed to be dealt with before we put it back together, and the answer to that was no. And it glued up very nicely. The seams are nice and tight. I'm very happy with it. So the next step here is to re-glue this chair. And before we obviously apply the glue, we're going to dry fit it, develop a clamping plan, and then we'll get to it. Okay, she's all dry fit together. Things are looking good. Joints are nice and tight. What I'll do is start with two uh, ratchet strap band clamps around the main uh, levels of the joints. And that should pull it all together. If I have to put some uh, bar clamps on, I can, but I think that'll take care of it. So let me get my glue and brushes and rags ready to go, and we'll get this baby glue back together.
Well, hey, here she is. She's all done. She's rock solid. I think she looks great. Come on inside. Let's take a look at what we did. Well, the first thing is we handled this big split up here. And I tell you, from the back, you can't even tell it's ever been split. And then here's our repair to this. Try to get you in here. And you can see how nice and tight that joint is. And here's the rest of it, all back together. All the joints are nice and tight. No wobbles, no wiggles. No problems. I'm happy with it. So thanks for joining us on what uh, initially started out to be a pretty simple repair. We wound up taking this chair right apart, built some parts for it. It was fun. Hey, from our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia, best regards, thanks for watching. Take good care and remember, it's just wood color and some shiny stuff. And please, if you like the video, hit the like button, share it with your friends, and help try to make the channel grow. We'll see you next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.